Hey, what's up guys? It's Chunky and I'm back again as I promised yesterday. Um, I just got so fucking tired of making promises that I don't keep and I think that's really fucked up. So I have to keep my promises and continue. I'm trying to like really um, stay on schedule, keep a schedule, do my videos while my kids are at school. Um, but yeah, y'all know I don't like rambling. Sometimes I ramble, but you know. Um, I broke my cup yesterday. I'm so fucking sad. I broke the inside. Like, it has like a little clear inside in the, in the inside. And it came out, but. Uh, you guys can see. I got Al Pollo motherfucking loco. Um, I always say Al Polo Loco because I remember I'd seen a video of Tupac and he's like, I want to get some Al Polo Loco. So I was like, yeah, Al Polo Loco. So, yeah, I got Al Polo Loco and um, I was kind of pissed off before I started this video because they forgot my tacos, my barbacoa tacos. And I guess it's barbecue, I guess like barbecue taco, like barbecue meat, I guess with barbecue sauce and like they put it in a taco and it's a taco. But, um, they forgot my tacos. I was so pissed off because, first of all, the bitches already had a motherfucking attitude. But I'll get into in that. I'll get into that after I hook up my salad. I got a, a, um, tostada salad. Double chicken tostada salad with avocado, lettuce, rice, beans, um, salsa, sour cream. They don't put enough sour cream. I should put extra sour cream. Do I have sour cream? Do I have sour cream? I don't know if I have sour cream, but I'm going to get up and get it right now. Um, so, then I got the creamy cilantro. It comes with creamy cilantro, but I get double creamy cilantro. And I asked the girl, oh, can I have a creamy cilantro? And then she's like, oh, I have to charge you because another lady already put a creamy cilantro in your bag. And I'm like, girl, like, I fucking hate when they fucking tell me, like, I got to charge you. But you know you could give me one. Like, I should have told her it was chunky, but... No, I'm just kidding. Imagine, like, I, I don't give a fuck. Like, I really don't give a fuck about, like, people, rec like, people recognize me. I get so nervous and shit. I get so, like, oh, my God. Like, I, I kind of, I kind of get nervous, but I don't want, I, I didn't want to tell you guys that because I don't want that to, um, like, scare you away, you know, of trying to tell me hi, but I get, like, I get like, ooh, like, oh my god, it's scary. Like, it's something that you don't, you can't get, you, I don't think you could get used to, you know? Um, I mean, the f famous factor to me isn't, isn't, like, a big deal to me. But if I could fucking go to my favorite, like, I would fucking love it if I go to my favorite, you know, places that I like to eat and they're like chunky oh I'm gonna hook you up with that extra sauce girl you know what I mean like yes yes I would love that shit like that to me right there would be like the bomb like yo do you know who I am like I'm chunky I don't have to pay for that extra sauce and they'll be like oh yes chunky whatever you want that would be the shit to me like if that could just happen to me I'll be that that'll be on point but yeah <laughs> like that's so funny but I'm gonna put this um Oh, shit. <laughs> okay, okay. I'm feeling like myself today. I'm going to put this sauce. And then I'm going to put this sauce. Um, I like to put two of these because I like tomato. And I like the juiciness. So Make sure you close it right because I ain't trying to get juice on my fucking shit. Um, I have chips here. And I have guacamole, extra guacamole. And I was going to, and look at how it's a little bit brown on the top. Like, come on. Come on. Get it together. Um, I guess this is a new thing they have. And I was trying to, I used coupons for this. Mmm. Mmm. Guacamole. It tastes pretty good. Mmm. I'm a little upset because and this is the um, guacamole salsa. I'm a little upset because I really wanted my two tacos with this because I know I'm probably not going to get full. Just keeping it real. I don't give a fuck.
Should I move this bag? Because I feel like it's a distraction. Mm. I'm kind of shaky because I'm hungry. Mmm. This is my favorite thing to eat from Pollo Loco. Is the tostada bowls. Mmm. I liked it all saucy. Mmm. Yes. I'll just have them right here, okay? <gasps> oh, I just dropped some on my pants. calling me someone is calling me mm. I don't have a napkin oh man and this is pretty messy oh wow I'm going to pause it and then knock them. Or a towel. Okay, I'm back. Duh. I'm such a dork sometimes. Mmm. So, I am going to continue with my story. Kind of, um... If you have, if this is your first time seeing this video and you haven't seen, um, part one. Go see it. Then come back here. Go see part one. Then go get pollo loco or go get something that you want to eat. Come back over here and watch this one and eat with me. So, um, um, yes, my aunt is still, well, my mom, my mom is my aunt. My mom is still with her current husband, the husband that she met that, you know, I'm so grateful for him. I, I'm really grateful for what he did for me and her and. You know, me and him went through hard times also because of me being an asshole. <laughs> me being a fucking asshole. You know, you go through those things when you're young and you go through your adolescence and you go through, um, you go through being a little asshole or a bitch or whatever. But despite all that, you know, I'm really grateful for him. And, you know, my aunt, too, for my for my aunt loving me. And um, I didn't think I said it in my last video, but my aunt, um, she worked two jobs to provide for us. And it was really hard for her because she had no education. Um, she didn't finish school. She had a hard life herself, too. But she never... That's one thing is that my aunt never complained about the hardship she's been through. And that's why I could talk about the hardships I've been through and, you know, learn from them and be strong from them. Because um, that's one thing my biological mother, she always is crying about her past and she let her past get the best of her. And that's one thing that I'm glad that my aunt taught me is never, never blame your past never blame what happened to you in the past and never and don't let it consume you and that's one thing is that she could talk now and say you know hey when I was younger my mom didn't take care of me and you know my mom was this and my mom was that and um she just went through a lot my aunt my aunt mother slash mother you know um went through a lot 
um, but she never let it get the best of her. And that's one thing that I took from her. And I feel like why I'm so strong. She worked two jobs while we lived in a, in a trailer. But. I just wanted to add that in there because I don't think I said that but. She worked two jobs. Um, so, he currently is with her husband and, you know, he's still being now a great grandfather, you know, he's a great grandfather to my, my kids. He spoils them and he, um, you know, loves them and, and, you know what I mean? He's just a great grandfather. To my kids. And I'm grateful for that and I'm happy for that. Um, so now I live on my own. I have my own apartment. I've been living on my own since I was... How old was I? I think I was 20... Two, I'm 28 now. So I was gonna say, am I 29? No, I'm not 29. Oh please! Oh my God! I don't want to be 30. Okay, don't get off on such a. Okay, so I moved on my own when I was 20. Actually, like I, I was on my own. Once I turned 18, I started leaving a lot. I started leaving the house a lot. Um. Because I started to feel, I started to feel, life started to catch up to me. And this is what I'm reaching out to tell young people watching me. So this is to all the young people watching me, okay? Life is going to hit you when you become of age. So don't fuck up in school, okay? Do not fuck up in school because you're going to wake up one day and you're going to fucking realize why the fuck did I fuck up in school? Why didn't I think about getting my money or my future? You know what I mean? You're going to wake up and life is going to hit you in the ass. And you're you're not going to know what the fuck to do with yourself. And sometimes if you're not strong enough, that shit could really fuck with you. And you're going to end up nowhere. You're going to end up nothing. You're going to end up a bum. On the real. But. Sorry. My teeth hit the spoon. So, you know what I mean? Life was hitting me in that way because I wasn't doing well in school. I guess at the time, I was... I was almost letting life and shit that I was going through and I was still going through at that moment um, get to me. And I was drinking and partying and now I know and I understand why my why my dad, I'm just gonna call him my dad. I usually just call him Andy. But now I, cause he he's a very a non-confrontational type of man too. Uh, just like my biological father. Um, if you don't know, I don't get a, I don't, my biological father didn't raise me and neither did my biological mother. But he's a very, non-emotional type of man. He, he just, he just doesn't show his emotion. He he doesn't deal with emotion well. And I'm all I could see from him was kind of anger towards me. And 
and now I kind of know why. I'm not even kind of. I know why. I was fucking up. I was fucking up in life. I was fucking up in life and I wasn't doing well and then I get pregnant and my life, I guess my life at that point was just slipping away from me, you know, I was just becoming, you know, a baby mama, living with her parents. And I I realized it quick. Um, at this point, I had a baby, so I was like, I felt I pretty much felt like I was. A leech almost or like freeloading or a freeloader a bum I felt like that I felt so disgusting because I had a baby I was there I could see him you know my dad like looking at me I felt that from him And at that point, I just would, I just started leaving a lot and I started staying with people. Um, running to my brother's house, running to my biological parents' house, like staying here and there because I didn't want to be home feeling like feeling like a bum you know um and I'm just gonna say it like I kind of cringe when I say it but I'm like you know what fuck it like just put it all out there like let's not fucking sugarcoat shit you know um my advice also, if you don't have a motherfucking job and you don't have a plan for your life, don't fucking have a kid. Please don't have a kid. You can't go backwards, you know what I mean? Like, it's gonna be ten times harder for you to do what you want to do in life. If you want to go to college... If you want to become something and you have a child, especially if you don't have help, it's going to be 10 times harder. You can't do it backwards. You can't not finish school, have a baby, and then try to go on with your life. It's going to be 10 times motherfucking harder. I'm not saying you can't do it, but don't cry if it's too hard because you're going to have to get through it. But I... Um... I started staying from place to place, and then I would leave, you know, when I would go home, I would, um, leave my daughter with them for a while, so they could, because they missed the baby, and, you know, my, my mom would be like, you know, I miss the baby, just leave her for a little while, like, leave her for, you know, a little weekend. I was just trying to find myself and trying to figure out what was I going to do um and it made it even harder that I threw a baby in the mix you know what I mean and it was just really hard um I love the creamy cilantro with the chips or like with the outside shell I, I like to dip it in there mm. Mm, I love mm, I love the creamy cilantro. Mm. 
So, to skip, I eventually end up um, meeting my man now, my vato. And he was able to hustle and, you know, tattoo. He's a tattoo artist. Um, also work you know jobs that he was working like at a furniture place he was moving furniture um we were able together we were able together to finally um save up to get a little a little um apartment it was 700 a month and it was really little but i liked it it was cute to me anything was good i'm i'm a humble person like i could like i said i came from a bucket trailer I came from living in a trailer. I came from living in a fucking garage. I could live anywhere, you know? Any house is a home to me. Um, so, I was happy. And I think I was, I was 22 at the time. And then, um... Pretty much... That was my first apartment. It was in El Sereno. The thing where we did fuck up is that I moved to his hood. I moved to where he was, you know, active. His hood. And, um, we made our house a home. My daughter was happy. I was happy. Um, but, uh, the street that we were living on was becoming very dangerous and I really didn't know about like about that street because it seemed like a quiet street so we started saving up more money and we finally got a bigger apartment and it was so cute like the apartment was so freaking cute like the the next apartment it was on Phelps and in, in El Sereno it was super big it wasn't even cute like it was big it's bigger than the apartment I live in now and it was only 900 a month I had two bedrooms. It was upstairs, downstairs. I had a huge living room, tile floor, a balcony, big closet. Oh, my God. I miss it so bad because, <clears throat> oh, my God. All this fucking sauce and this Diet Coke is just, whew. Fucking <laughs> So, we got our second apartment, and I loved it. I was happy. It was really big, um, but then me and him started to have problems because he was starting to... get into mess there in his hood and I just told him like I can't deal with this I can't deal with this with my daughter here um before it gets to become too much like I'm giving you an ultimatum like you need to stop or I'm leaving and it didn't stop so I left and I went back home I moved out and I went back home to my mom and Andy and, you know, I moved into their back house. Because my uncle was staying in the back house. So it was convenient that my uncle, well, my uncle moved out. Honestly, let me tell you the truth. Let me tell you the tea. Let me tell you the tea, okay? My uncle was fucking freeloading off my my um mom and andy for so fucking long i don't give a fuck i'm gonna say it. he was freeloading he saw me move out and he was like damn if she can move out i'm gonna need to fucking move out because i'm gonna look like a real fucking freeloader and i'm like yes you better fucking move out because you look like an old ass freeloader right now i was like i ain't about to be almost 50 years old 
freeloading and shit. Living in the back house paying no motherfucking rent. Okay. So, my man brought the kids home. I'm like, take them to McDonald's. So, they're going to go to McDonald's and play while I talk to you guys. <laughs> but, um, so, yeah, like, I, I mean... I would hear, like, that's one reason why I got the hint, too, from my uncle, from my uncle, from my, um, dad, um, my mom's husband, was, like, he would always talk shit about my uncle, like, hey, like, you know, he's a freeloader, he needs to pay rent, like, he needs to contribute, I'm not gonna fucking be, you know, he just wouldn't pay rent, and my aunt and him would get, my mom and him would get in fights, and, like, you know, his excuse was, oh, he was always working. He was always at work. But still, like, you still contribute. You still at least give 100 or 200. Like, you don't fucking do that shit. And and I was like, damn, you know what? Like, I'm not going to be like that the rest of my life. I need to get out of here, you know? Regardless, I'm going to do whatever I had to do, like, to fucking get the fuck out of there. I did work, um... At an autometry, I was a receptionist for a little while. But I would do whatever I had to do to just be on my own and not, you know, be a fucking lacara and just fucking be freeloading off people you know so it just so happened that when I moved out the day I, I remember the day I moved out um I came in through my back through my back door because I had like in my room I had my own back door to come in and come out um I w they almost had like two back houses my room was connected to the house but it had its own entrance um so I came through the back I brought my biological mom's um truck and I just started moving my shit. Just started moving. And my aunt was crying. She didn't want me to go. Uh, I told her I would let her see her, her grandbaby anytime she wants. You know, I never kept her from her. I said, you know, I just got to go. Like, I, you know, I had, I did have a fight with them. And I had a fight with her husband. And um, the fight was basically... I had to do with my biological mother because... My biological mother, one day, you know, they were gone. They were out of town. And I was already feeling down. And he was already showing anger towards me because of the way I was going in life. And because of being, you know, already a mother and just living there and not really doing anything. And um, so I was there and they were out of town. And... um You know, I was left with the baby. I had no car. I had no license. And I was talking to my biological mother at the time. And I asked her, um, can you pick me up? Can you give me a ride somewhere? So she came, picked me up, and she had to use the restroom. I let her in the house to use the restroom. Like, maybe for like two minutes she was in the house. And she used the restroom. She ran out. We left. So I guess... um. My um, uncle that lived in the back house. Oh, let me move my leg because my foot is falling asleep. Okay, so I guess my uncle that was living in the back, his fucking bitch ass, told um, like a bitch. I mean, come on, like a bitch. Like, come on, really? Oh my god, I fucking can't stand that fool. But like a fucking little bitch ass. And he, mind you, at this time he was about. When I say uncle living in the back house, you would think, oh, like twenty, thirty. Uh, in his late 30s, in his early 30s. No. This nigga was fucking in his 50s already. Or gonna be 50 like in his 40s. He's already... I think he's 50 something now, but... His bitch ass goes like a little bitch. Like a little fairy twinkling his little fucking toes. And goes tells my mom and Andy that I had my mom in the fucking house. <sighs> But, and then he also tells them, and they don't like my mom. They know she's a witch, they know she steals, they know she lies, they know she, 
what she is so they don't want her in their house they don't like her whatsoever but um so ooh, something's happening i don't know if you hear the police but um so the next day i came home and i had you know my man come and pick me up his him and his friend come and pick me up mm. the guacamole is good um so they came and picked me up and it was summer it was fucking hot and i told them like look i gotta get my shit together because i was taking my daughter too I was like, I gotta get my shit together. I'm not done. Like, I'm getting the baby together. I'm getting my stuff together. Like, I'm packing my shit. I'm packing her shit. This was not when I moved out yet. This is before I moved out. This is what led to me just finally out. Um. So I told them, oh, come in for a minute. You know, just wait on the couch and let me grab my shit. It took me about 15 minutes um, to get my shit. So... I got my shit. They helped me with it because I needed I needed them to get the stroller. You know, when you have a baby, you have a stroller. You have a car seat. You have their diaper bag. I had my bag. I had her stuff. Like, I had a lot of shit because I was going to stay with him at his um, stepmom's house. So, um, it took about me. It took, took me about 15 minutes to get my stuff together. And that's how long they were in the house. They helped me take my stuff to the car. Boom, we were gone. So, that's what happened, like, the week while they were gone. I wasn't there the rest of the week. I was there two days out of the week. One, my biological mother picked me up. Two, then he picked me up and I was gone. And then I came back, um, the day they were coming back, I came back, like, a couple hours before they came back. So, <laughs> I came back home. My bitch-ass Uncle Dennis tells them i had guys in the house i had my mom in the house and we was all just having a party no uh-uh it wasn't even like that like what the fuck you think i had two guys me and my mom were partying with two guys in the house like are you fucking serious like are you really fucking serious you are such a bitch anyways i'm still mad at that fool about that shit but um because Really, it hurt me. It really did hurt me because I looked up to my Uncle Dennis for the longest time since I was little. And I looked at him like a dad. Like, he was my Uncle Dennis. Like, I really looked up to him. And for him to do that shit to me, was I knew that he would smoke weed in the back house. I knew shit that he would do. But I never fucking would put him out there like that. Like... Are you serious? So, anyways, they came in. Andy got all mad at me. I started yelling. He started yelling. We started yelling at each other. He told me, like, he was talking shit to me. I was talking shit to him. He told me, get the fuck out. I was like, okay, get the fuck out. <laughs> Fool, I ain't hardly here anyways. If you want me to get the fuck out, I will get the fuck out. I grabbed all my shit I could. Actually, my bags weren't even unpacked yet. I grabbed all my shit. My aunt was telling me, no, don't go, don't go. I was like, no, I'm out. Like, I ain't even going to try to be told, be told on like a fucking child, first of all. Um, be yelled at. Like, I'm fucking 16, 13 years old. Um, I'm a mother. I have a child. I'm older. Like, this is just bullshit. This is just complete bullshit. I'm telling you what happened and I'm still getting yelled at. Like... This is just bullshit, and I'm just out of here. So I just left walking on the bus. I took the bus, when I, and I was just, I'm like, that's it. Like, I can't do this shit anymore. I, I'm just gone. That's when I got my house with my man, or our apartment. Then we got a second apartment, but then I left them, and I went back. And when I went back, conveniently, that's why my uncle, this is, that's what I led to that story, is my Uncle Dennis was gone. He left because he figured, damn, I look stupid. This girl just left the house, got her own apartment, and I can't do that shit. So he wanted to try to show me up because he's a little bitch like that. 
and he got himself i don't know whatever the fuck he got himself he moved in with like six people to get like one house to rent a house so i came back i started renting the house in the back and then i found out i was pregnant I was pregnant with my second baby, and I was like, oh, no, I'm pregnant. And I'm like, the moment I found out I was pregnant with my second child, I was like, you know what? Fuck. The very fucking moment, my brain started working. And I was like, I need to not be living in a back house with two children. I can't do it. So... I told him, like, I'm pregnant, you need to get your shit together, like, he was hurt that I left him, he, he, he was also doing his thinking while I was gone, he was crying, he wanted to be back with me, he's like, I don't want to lose you, I mean, he would want to lose me, you know, but he was just like, I don't want to lose you, and I'll do anything, I was like, well, get your shit together, because you're about to have a baby. So, he started working, he started coming over, I introduced him to my mom, I told my mom I was pregnant, he met her, um, he bought a little car with some of the money that he was, uh, he was, um, saving, he bought a little car, he moved in with me in the back house, he started working, I was doing, you know, things too, to get money, and, um, I was hustling, he was hustling, we both hustled and we got enough money to move out. So then, oh, so we moved out into these apartments. Oh, that's a part three. Oh my God. <laughs> part three. Okay, so. We got our second apartment. I mean, our second apartment. By now, it's our third apartment. What I moved into. Oh, my God. What I moved in, into was... I moved to Uptown Whittier. If anybody knows where Uptown Whittier is, knows how it is... It's it's ghetto in a weird way. Uptown Whittier is like there's a there's a spot before you get to like Uptown Whittier to where like it's like the nice area and there's like these big lush houses like but there's a there's a spot in between that before you get to that in between Pico Rivera and then the good part of Whittier, where it is so weird ghetto. Like, it's weird, it's ghetto, but there's like, I don't know, it's weird. So we moved there. <laughs> so we moved to that part. Because mm, I stopped. I thought Whittier, Uptown Whittier was a good area. Like, people think Uptown Whittier, oh, it's a good area. No. It's a weird area. And it's like a lot of tweakers and like crazy white people. Like here, like there's crazy Mexicans and like in East LA there's like crazy Mexicans. But over there's like crazy Mexicans, like Baisa Mexicans and then like crazy ass white people. Like it was something I wasn't used to like. It was just something I wasn't used to, but we moved over there, and then um, that would be part three. <laughs> but I did not know this would be part three. But I have to tell you, I have to tell you what happened when I moved there because it changed my life. But it also gave me the opportunity to move where I am now. But I guess I'm done. <laughs> 
stay chunky because chunky is beautiful and i will see you tomorrow i love you guys stay chunky yeah i got ready to send that. okay love you guys bye